Hello, my name is Dr. Aidan Elliott and welcome to this video on A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. In the next few minutes I'll use just ten quotes to help you get an understanding of this thought-provoking story. The first thing to say is that A Christmas Carol is a redemption story. It charts how Scrooge changes from a mean and uncharitable man to become kind and generous by embracing the spirit of Christmas. But what is of interest to us is not that he finds redemption, but how he finds it. Our first quote describes the role Scrooge undertook when his friend Marley died. Scrooge was his sole executor, his sole administrator, his sole assign, his sole residuary legatee, his sole friend and sole mourner. The key word here is clearly the word soul, repeated six times. Coming very near to the beginning of the story, it hammers home the idea that Scrooge is alone. This is important because the story is in part about the way Scrooge will come to realise that he needs to play a more active role in his community. The second quote describes Scrooge's personality. He carried his own low temperature always about with him and didn't thaw it one degree at Christmas. This use of metaphor tells us that he never shows warm emotions towards others. Even at Christmas, when most people find a way to be warmer and more generous. There are also mentions of Scrooge being icy cold at this point in the story. But also note that he's described as solitary as an oyster in this section. Now, on one level, this simply reinforces the idea that he's alone and has a hard exterior. But the simile might also make us think about oysters containing pearls. In other words, there is something potentially valuable within Scrooge that might be redeemed. And that, of course, is his soul. The next quote is from Scrooge's nephew, Fred. Though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that Christmas has done me good, and will do me good, and I say God bless it. This introduces the idea of Christmas as a central theme, as the novel's title suggests. But why is Christmas important? I'll explore the theme of Christmas in much greater detail in another video, but for now, this quote tells us that being generous and kind is of greater value than all the money we might accumulate. And money, of course, is Scrooge's preoccupation. If they would rather die, they had better do it and decrease the surplus population. This quote is Scrooge's response to a visitor who is collecting for charity. The man has argued that the poor would rather die than be put to work in a prison or a workhouse. In contrast, Scrooge thinks that the poor will be better off dying because it would reduce the number of unproductive people in society. Scrooge here echoes the beliefs of the English cleric Thomas Malthus who believed that the creation of a happy and fulfilled society was held back when the population increased to the point where the amount of money and food available could not sustain them. It is, of course, a view that's easy to take in the abstract, where people are referred to impersonally using the words they or the surplus. The next quote comes from the ghost of Marley, and it's intended to make Scrooge fearful. It's required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men and travel far and wide. There are two important things here. First, Marley has discovered, now that he's dead that the true purpose of any human life is to mix with his fellow humans and bring them happiness. Note the phrase, it is required of every man. It isn't optional. In the process of walking abroad, a person will see that there are inequalities to be addressed and should help to address them. Because Marley did not do that in his earthly life, his spirit must now wander the earth for eternity and witness human misery without being able to help anyone. Marley's chains are thus a metaphor for his mental imprisonment and torture, and he warns Scrooge that the same fate awaits him unless he changes. 
Scrooge then meets the ghost of Christmas past. Fezziwig has spent but a few pounds of your mortal money, three or four perhaps. Is that so much that he deserves this praise? The purpose of this meeting is to show Scrooge what he's forgotten from his early life, before he changed and became mean and isolated. Some of these memories are happy, including the party thrown by one of Scrooge's employers, Mr Fezziwig. The ghost points out that making people happy doesn't take a lot of money, just a few pounds and a little effort. The Ghost of Christmas Past also shows Scrooge his younger self in conversation with a young woman. She tells him that another idol has displaced me. And if it can cheer and comfort you in time to come, as I would have tried to do, I have no just cause to grieve. This quote has a couple of key points embedded in it. First is the idea that the idol that Scrooge worships is money, rather than the young woman he was due to marry. Second... She says that the value of a human relationship is that there's someone to cheer and comfort us when times get hard, as she would have done for Scrooge. Later, the ghost will show him the same young woman, happily married with children, the future that Scrooge could have enjoyed. The next quote describes the moment Scrooge sees the ghost of Christmas present. Heaped up on the floor to form a kind of throne were turkeys, sausages, puddings... The purpose here is to show Scrooge the sheer abundance in the world that could be shared and reinforces the idea that Scrooge's purpose in life should be to share such abundance. Now this is why the ghost will go on to show him Bob Cratchit, the office clerk who's paid so little by Scrooge that he struggles to feed his family at Christmas and can only afford a very small goose. It would have been very easy for Scrooge to help the Cratchit family. When the ghost of Christmas present shows Scrooge the Cratchit family, Scrooge asks what will happen to their sick child, Tiny Tim. The ghost replies, I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. The ghost of Christmas present shows Scrooge that Tiny Tim, a sickly child who needs a crutch to walk, will die if things remain unaltered. Shadows here means the people of the future, whose future remains to be determined. So Scrooge does not amend his ways, such a future might become a reality. At this point, the ghost also reminds Scrooge of his earlier quote. If he be like to die, he'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Scrooge is horrified to hear his own words used about Tiny Tim a person he's now got to know about as an individual, not as an abstract idea. Interestingly, the final ghost of Christmas yet to come never speaks a word, but shows Scrooge a future where an unidentified man lies dead on a bed and a series of people are shown selling his property and talking about him in unfavourable terms. But this lack of words means that it takes a long time for Scrooge to realise that the dead man is Scrooge himself. Am I that man who lay upon the bed? This is the final shock that leads Scrooge to the realisation that if he does not change, not only will others suffer and die, but he will be hated and then forgotten. And one final bonus quote. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. This is how Scrooge is redeemed. He finally knows how to keep Christmas well. But what does that mean? It means to be generous to the poor by making large contributions to charity, to bring happiness to the Cratchit family by buying them a turkey, and by giving Bob Cratchit a pay rise. And, importantly, in the process, he also makes himself happy because Scrooge is now part of his community and is using his money to help others not just to make himself wealthy. He's finally learned, as he mentions at the end of Stave 4, that he needs to keep the past, the present and the future all in mind. By remembering the happiness he felt in the past and being generous to people in the present, he helps to build a future where more people will be happier, healthier and more prosperous. So the message of this book is that our purpose in life is to make people happy 
And when we do this, we become happier ourselves. So do look out for some of these features as you read this book and I hope that this video has given you some useful insights that will help you to get greater enjoyment from A Christmas Carol. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe now so that you never miss any of my future posts.